Welcome to another episode of VKind Connects. I'm your host, Shabnam Islam. And today we have the world-renowned multimedia platform broadcast journalist and activism icon, Jane Velez Mitchell. Now, Jane is an Emmy Award winning reporter, a New York Times bestselling author, producer, and founder of Unchained TV, a digital news network for animal rights and the globally conscious vegan uh, lifestyle that showcases anything and everything vegan, including festivals, uh, animal rights conferences, organizations, and even vegan cooking. So Jane, thank you so much for your contributions to the world and joining us today. Job, it's so great to be here. I love what VKind does. And let's just save the planet already. That's right. And so tell us, how did you become this plant based media mogul? I mean, what was the most significant influences that impacted your career path to get you where you are today? Well, that's very kind. I don't consider myself a, a mogul by any means. In fact, you are. What I started was a nonprofit, AKA a money pit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I grew up in midtown Manhattan. Um, uh, my mom was from Puerto Rico. My dad was Irish American and my mom was very avant-garde. She was doing yoga in the forties. She was an early hyphenate. Uh, she kept her name when she married my dad, who was Pierce Mitchell and she was Anita Velez Mitchell. And then when I got older, I added my mother's name as well. It just fit better for me in terms of expressing my identity. So I went to NYU when I graduated. Uh, I had attended some protests. I've always been a leafleter and a protester. Even in high school, I was always passing it. You see me right now, right? Look, here I am <laughs> holding up a sign. It doesn't, it doesn't end. My high school yearbook, I'm the exact same person. <laughs> and um, so uh, I had been interviewed a couple of times uh, doing protests and various things. And I decided to major in journalism. I graduated from NYU. My first job was in Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, wow, what a fun time. A little too much fun, if you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> just think of a lot of disco music and dancing and then going to work without sleeping. But anyway, I was a, an immature, um, just out of college kind of person. And uh, then I got a job in Minneapolis where I spent two years. And literally, it was like... I didn't even have a coat. I didn't know what a defroster was. I, I never drove in Manhattan growing up. So it was truly a challenge. Then I went to Philly, spent a year and a half there. And that was right around the time that PETA was getting started. And I remember somebody sent me some video of a, a terrible head injury experiment done on primates. And I was just like, this is morally wrong. This is evil. I didn't know what to do about it. But I said, something has to be done. That was, I'll never forget that. It was just, it was so awful. And uh, my mother had been, when she was a child, she had a, a pig who was a friend of hers on the island of Vieques, where she lived, which is part of the Puerto Rican Commonwealth. It's right off the main island. And um, they killed her pig for food. That it, The pig was an animal for a food animal, but she didn't know that. She had a friend. Pigs are smarter than dogs. She mm -hmm. fainted. And when she came to, she never, never touched me. So when she came to the United States and married my dad, he also went, we thought we were vegetarians, but we weren't. We ate fish, we ate dairy, we ate cheese, but we were at least on the journey. We didn't have meat mm -hmm. in the house and we didn't eat you know, meat. There was, it wasn't strict. There were exceptions. I recently remembered something about eating duck at a restaurant, um, which kind of horrified me. But suffice it to say, we were on the journey. At least we knew that ham didn't fall from ham trees, right? We, we never <laughs> right. touched any of, that, any of that stuff. So, um, uh, yes, Philadelphia. Then I got a job back in my hometown, New York. I grew up in Midtown Manhattan, right across from Carnegie Hall. And WCBS was just down the block. So I worked there for eight years. Then I got a job in California, in Los Angeles, in Hollywood. I worked at the Paramount Studios a lot. KCAL uh, wanted an anchor and a friend of mine had gotten a job there. So I went to LA and I'm still here 32 years later. I fell in love with LA and uh, uh, it was around that time that I interviewed Howard Lyman, the fourth generation cattle rancher who had just been on Oprah and he had made a pact with God. If you get me out of the surgery, he had gotten very ill. I will reveal the secret horrors of the cattle industry, which he did. 
And this was a huge thing back, you know, literally it's like a more than a quarter of a century ago. Um, Oprah was sued by the cattlemen. She won and he was famous. His name was Howard Lyman. At that moment in time, he was in the spotlight. He wrote a book called Mad Cowboy, and I interviewed him. And afterwards, he and his publicist, who turned out to be a very fierce activist, Mar Nealon, they came up to my cubicle and they said, we hear you're a vegetarian. By that time, I was a vegetarian. And I said, yes. And they said, well, do you eat dairy? And I kind of hung my head because he had just talked about the mothers being ripped from the babies, the boy calves being thrown on dead piles or shot or put in veal crates. And so I said, yes. And then they said, liquid meat. They pointed their finger right at my nose. Liquid meat like that. And that's the moment I went vegan and I've never looked back. And now we are going to turn the whole world vegan with Unchained TV, our new streaming network, a global streaming network. I love that. And as someone who has experienced this exceptional amount of success on national cable television networks like KCAL, even talk radio, right? Why is it that you decided to make that shift to a social media outlet like Unchained TV? Well, my last job uh, before starting my nonprofit was at CNN Headline News. I had my own show called Issues with Jane Velez Mitchell. And I always said, that's perfect because I have a lot of issues. And uh, <laughs> when I got hired for that show, uh, they asked, uh, well, what are your interests? I said, you know, what I'd really love to do is a little animal segment once a week. He said, I don't see a problem with that. They probably thought I was going to do pet adoptions. I was very quickly doing hardcore animal rights, pig gestation crates, tail docking, showing all the horrors of factory farming. And to their credit, they never stopped me for six years. Pretty much every Friday, I did a hardcore animal rights segment and interviewed a lot of people like Josh Tetrick, uh, who was at the time just starting Just Mayo. And he even told me, he said he used that video to go out there and raise funds. And uh, now, of course, adjust as one of these big, big vegan companies. So after that show ended, after a good run, six years, I left on great terms. They gave me my social media. And in fact, I had never used it myself, probably would have been fired had I started tweeting and doing all sorts of things. So I just, I took it and I, I thought, well, that little segment I did once a week, why don't I just do that full time and make that my thing? And I started going to protests and noticing immediately that people in New York were going to tremendous lengths doing protests for animal rights. Uh, it was freezing, so people weren't stopping to look. Nobody was documenting it. And I was like, what's wrong with this picture if a tree falls and no one hears it? So I started with a GoPro. This was back in 2015, documenting these protests. And I'll never forget, one of the first ones was at Staples Center in Brooklyn, 200 people in freezing cold, nine degree weather, protesting Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. And, you know, now Ringling's is out of business, not because of me, because of PETA and many, many incredible um, animal lovers who stood up for these poor wild animals kidnapped from their wild homes to be put on display. But it always seems impossible until it's done. And I didn't say that. Nelson Mandela said it. So we just do the next indicated thing. When Facebook Live came along in approximately 2016, we started going live. We realized this is a global movement. We have about 70 contributors around the world who go live at VegFest and protests and cubes and vigils and all sorts of events. And then we decided, okay, we need to graduate, constantly pivot, pivot, pivot. So the next thing was to do a, a studio, in-studio Hollywood level cooking show, vegan cooking show, which we did called New Day, New Chef. Uh, that won two taste awards. It was nominated for eight taste awards and won two taste awards. And we also did a documentary called Countdown to Year Zero, uh, talking about why we need to achieve a vegan world by 2026 to avoid a climate apocalypse. So what's the next pivot? The next pivot is, wow, let's start our own streaming network. That's where television's going. So that's why we started Unchained TV. And uh, you can even... Just look, grab that, and in two seconds, you can be there. Free global streaming network. We're so pleased and honored to be collaborating with VKind and some of their incredible videos, your incredible videos. And you are uh, the host and anchor of a lot of those uh, shows. So uh, we're just happy to, it's not our 
app. It's not our streaming network. It belongs to the entire vegan animal rights community. It's a nonprofit. You have videos, contact us and let's put them up there because what we're doing is you can get it on your Roku device, your Amazon Fire Stick, your Apple TV device, not to be confused with the Apple subscription service, which is totally different. This is a device. And then it also will go up under streaming channels on your LG and Samsung smart TV. And of course, you can get it right on your phone. So the whole point is to make it absolutely easy and free for people to just go in there and see all sorts of movies and videos, documentaries, cooking shows, travel shows. We just finished shooting the first ever in history reality TV series starring a family of pigs. Get out. Yep, that's that's <laughs> it's called Pig Little Eyes. Oh, and it, 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 is it a series? It's a series, yes. And it's going to be debuting in May on Unchained TV. And it's very uh, dramatic and exciting and adorable. And basically what happened was we started looking at the stats. And while it's very important to have serious documentaries, it seemed like a lot of people liked the fun stuff. The lingerie protest where um, it started with a supermodel in Australia who's vegan taking it off for animal rights. She just stripped down to her lingerie and went out with a sign and it went viral. And now it's a global movement. And that video that we did, we did an original film about her and this lingerie protest movement. And that just, just, it kind of put us on the map because that was so successful. And then we started noticing that, um, oh, other people are having lingerie protests. And so we, we realized we need some light content. People don't want to be lectured to. So I was calling my friend, Simone Reyes, who has been on a reality show. And I was like, Simone, we need to do a reality show. And she said, I can't talk right now. Okay. I'm in the middle of rescuing these two pigs. They're in a kill shelter. They're going to be killed tonight. I have, I don't have any time. I said, wait a second. That's our reality show. And that's exactly what we did. We followed the rescue of these two pigs, a mama pig and a papa pig, Dante and Beatrice, uh, part of Dante's Inferno named after Dante's Inferno, mama pig and papa pig. And it turns out after we, and that, that was hard just to rescue. You can't just walk out of a shelter with pigs. You know, they're large. Right. They need to be, it's very complicated. And then we finally found a home. You'll learn all about this during the show. Guess what? Mama's pregnant with a oh, wow. baker's dozen of pigs, piggies. Oh, wow. So all heck breaks loose, if you know what I mean. Oh, that's awesome. I can't wait to watch that. On and that's going to be available on Unchained TV. So uh, it's it's amazing because I think the thing when we when we talk about creating partnerships and cooperative opportunities for the growth and development of an organization like Unchained, the common misconception is, oh, I need to have a sponsor or I need to be someone to to be involved. But that's not what Unchained TV is about, right? Well, we're a nonprofit, so we have all these rules and constraints, uh, but. We certainly want to put out content by uh, mom and pop and large vegan companies that are doing incredible things. Like we're going to just in a day or two launch Derek Sarno Wicked Kitchen Cooking with Mushrooms. Now he whips up the most incredible mouthwatering dishes using mushrooms and he mimics a lot of meat products and uh, mm -hmm. he's just incredible. Now, yeah, he's not a nonprofit himself, but the, the information there is great and we're not profiting from it. So um, he's putting up uh, Wicked Kitchen's videos is fantastic and people need to see that. They need to see kind of a hunky guy making food that looks like meat and bust this myth that there's meat and it's somehow connected to masculinity. Oh, contraire, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, actually, uh, you know, the consumption of meat, which is contains cholesterol, which leads to plaque, which clogs arteries is actually, um, a leading cause of erectile dysfunction. And in all seriousness, Absolutely. it's a precursor of heart disease because, um, when your body gets clogged, and this is something that people don't realize when plaque is clogging your arteries, the vessels in your body, it's systemic. The vessels to the heart are larger than a lot of the other vessels. So boom, that's 
the death knell. It's the leading killer. Um, but it, it's affecting your every vessel in your body and having negative impacts across your body. So now people are looking at, well, why is there this dementia uh, skyrocketing and younger and younger people? Well, fast food, meat and dairy laden diet. So there's a lot of investigation into that. I'm not a scientist or a doctor, but I can tell you that for sure, when, you're, when your arteries and your vessels are clogged, it's not just happening to one vessel. It's systemic throughout the body. Absolutely. There was a study by Dr. Robert Vogel that compared um, blood draws post-meal consumption. And I think he, he showed this on the Game Changers where he had three different candidates eat either a plant-based meal or an animal-based meal. And they did a blood draw two hours post-meal. And they found that those that ate plant-based products had a more robust, clearer plasma volume, which means that they had greater endothelial function. And the endothelial lining is what you need to like transfer nutrients in and out of the blood cells. And so it, it was just fascinating that it was immediate. It didn't have to be longitudinal doses. It was one time eating it and seeing that impact on the blood was just, it was fascinating. So well, that, they also pointed things like that out in the great film, The Game Changers, uh, yep. which showed that you know some of these top athletes, their recovery times are better uh, when they go plant-based. Uh, it's just there are myths <clears throat> and somebody gave me the list. Let's see if I can remember it. the myths, the four myths that are ruining our health collectively are one calcium has to come from milk of a cow. Nonsense. Mm -hmm. There's calcium in oranges. There's calcium in all sorts of things. Protein has to come from a dead animal. Nonsense. Kale has more protein calorie per calorie than steak that we got to get our omega threes from fish. You see the commercials all the time. Nonsense. It's what the fish are eating, the plankton that brings the um, omegas. And the final one is, I'll remember it down the road, but similar, right? <laughs> similar. Absolutely. You know, and that's just it. Uh, animals are just the middlemen. They get their protein from the ground, from the source, their B12 from, from the soil. So if we could just start living a little bit more like that, we would be in such a better place in the climate and for us. And that's what we're trying to show people. We're trying to, you know, people are looking for solutions. We are entering a very, very strange time in the world to wit the pandemic. Well, back on February 27th, 2022, the New York Times published a story that phew, nobody seems picked up because I was looking. Uh, a collective body of scientists analyzed all the data and they concluded that pretty much beyond a reasonable doubt by a preponderance of the evidence, the COVID-19 pandemic started in the Wuhan wet market. So all those conspiracy yes. theories, they said, no, the overwhelming evidence is that it started in a slaughterhouse in Wuhan, China. A wet market is a retail slaughterhouse. Now, right there, for no, if there were no other reasons to give up eating animals, that would be a good enough reason. Uh, how many millions of people Absolutely. died as a result of the pandemic? I think 6 million or something globally. Um, you know, right there, it's not in our self-interest to eat animals. Then you have heart disease being the leading killer. Then there's cancer. Processed meat is officially cancer causing, according to the World Health Organization. And then there's the environmental impact. Methane, which is uh, what animals produce is so much more potent than CO2. And it, it also lasts a lot uh, less time. So uh, you could immediately, if you just got rid of that methane, begin to um, have a greater impact on climate change than doing something that would take a longer time with CO2 because um, we're running out of time. So all of these Absolutely. reasons, I could go on all day, but people aren't getting the information. Why? Because government has been co-opted by the meat and dairy industry. The USDA is run by a dairy industry trade group leader, Tom Vilsack. He is a dairy industry executive running the United States Department He's of Agriculture. He's in bed with the dairy industry. Yeah. Um, he is the dairy industry. So, he is you know, the dairy industry. <laughs> Yeah, so you got the government and the media. The United Nations has an official pact with the Meat Secretariat. Okay, so where are you going to get your information from? We 
This streaming network, Unchained TV, okay, in, in oppressive cultures, people, they do what they can to hand out, right, or use some kind of app that can't be traced, risking their own lives to get the truth out. Well, we're kind mm-hmm. of doing that. We are not, I'm not risking my life, not yet anyway, but um, we are trying to get the truth out to people. Now, why do I feel that this is a very good technology to do so? First of all, we have to use every technology available. There's 8 billion people on this planet. We can't talk to them one-on-one, right? We know mm-hmm. Facebook algorithms have changed. They're not sending it out to as many people. While TikTok is great, there's only so much you can communicate in 30 seconds or, you know, how whatever the short time period is that you can be on TikTok. So we need to get some complex thoughts to people, con- concepts. And those documentaries and those cooking shows and those interview shows and those travel shows, those are the things that can really make the case for going plant-based. And we have to go plant-based as a global culture to avoid an ecological apocalypse. And so uh, what we're doing is we already have about 600 videos, but again, they can't all be serious. And and that's where I think VKind is going to come in. I think together, you and I uh, will be able to do some really fun content that where people aren't being educated, but they're getting a message. Like Pig Little Absolutely. Lies, the pig reality show. Absolutely. But there is a sense of urgency. And, you know, I think Dr. Silas Rao talks about this significantly with his with his studies. And actually, I met you at the doctor at his food healers event in Santa Monica a few months ago. And let's be honest, Dr. Rao was a big part of your 2019 doc- documentary, A Countdown to Year Zero. And as much as we need to make things light, there is a sense of urgency to talk about what what is this countdown to year zero? What is, what is well, this documentary about? Well, Dr. Silas Shrau is somebody who I consider a genius. And uh, I encountered him in Texas at the Rowdy Girl Sanctuary. He walked up and he was talking pretty much to an empty field because it was a big party. Everybody was at the food booths and this man gets up and starts talking. And I was going live. This is a messy phone. I was going live. <laughs> And it shows you the value of going live because I I was going live when he stepped up. And as I was listening to him, I was like, wow, this man is blowing my mind. And he basically got up there and said, okay, we know why we have to go vegan, okay, to save the planet. We know when we have to go vegan by, by 2026, because at the rate we're going, we will have wiped out most wildlife by 2026. And all we need to do is figure out how to do it. It's um. It's an engineering problem. And when he said that, I was like, wow, because I had read that the women who won a a Nobel Peace Prize for stopping or alleviating or vastly reducing the troubles in Northern Ireland had seen a child shot on a lawn one day and they walked out and they said, enough, we are going to stop the troubles. And everybody laughed at them. And what they said is, if you can't even say what you want, how are you going to achieve it? So I realized when I was listening to Dr. Rao, he was the first time anybody had said, we're going to achieve a vegan world. And he stated that. And I thought that was very powerful because even vegans sometimes go, well, it'll never happen. No, he's like, we're going to do this. And it just harkened back to that um, lesson I got from reading about the women who stopped the troubles that they stated something unequivocally and they owned it and they believed it and that that is the first step in making something happen, is stating your intention. So I got really intrigued by him and he then said, well, we're going to go to Costa Rica. Uh, Would you like to come? And about a dozen people went with him to Costa Rica to see a former cattle ranch that had in rapid order been reforested. Because mm-hmm. one of the things we have to do is, and this is his plan, is when as we eliminate animal agriculture, since you know, 80 billion animals we raise and kill every year are eating a huge percentage of the food, not only can we eliminate cattle grazing land and reforest a lot of that, we can also reforest a lot of the farmland that is going to feed farmed animals. Uh, 80% of the soy produced is fed to farmed animals. Um, it's not to humans. So 
as we reduce the amount of food we have to produce while simultaneously ending world hunger, uh, we can then reforest those lands that are not used for farmland and start trees absorb carbon. Those trees will begin to absorb carbon and that will also help reduce the earth's temperature. So I was learning all about this. And um, Anita Krines of the Save Movement, who's one of my heroes, said, well, take a good camera when you go down there and, you know, do some nice shooting, not just live. So, of course, me, I've got my camera in their face the whole time. You know, they're all like, OK. And then afterwards, I'm like, what do I do with this? So we ended up just doing a documentary. And uh, it's won uh, more than a dozen awards, and it's uh, the official selection in two, at least two dozen film festivals. And so I'm very proud of it. But really, it's um, it was Jeff Adams of Vegan Link who did a great job shooting the second half of it and editing it. And Dr. Rao, he's just he's a systems analyst. He's an engineer. He worked at Intel for 20 years. He was instrumental in the acceleration of the internet speeds. He's not just somebody saying this. And, right, he's brilliant. And he's willing to debate anyone, anyone at any mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was it was a fantastic documentary. And if you, for those of you that haven't seen it, you can see it on Amazon Prime. And on um, Chain TV. And of course, on Unchained TV. So Jane, let's, what's, what's coming up? What's coming up next for you mm-hmm. guys on Unchained TV? What can we, we be expecting? Well, we're in the process of editing the Pig Little Lies. We've got the first episode edited. And in fact, the second I finish with you, I'm jumping on a call with our fabulous producer, Eamon McChrystal of Inspired to talk about how we are going to edit it and promote it. So we're going to do that. We also have a plan down the road to do kind of a vegan shark tank. Obviously, we don't have people who are going to, well, maybe we do, but I I haven't gotten anybody who says, okay, I'm going to come and be on your show and give somebody $250,000. But that's, there are other packages that we can put together. Like um, we can do a publicity campaign for them. We can get them an hour Zoom with an entrepreneur, famous vegan entrepreneur to give them feedback on how to do their small business. So we plan on helping small mom and pop businesses. In fact, we just had a launch party that was very successful, and I'm so glad you were there. It was super fun. And um, some of the incredible mom-and-pop companies that volunteered, one woman made incredible vegan cakes. You know, my my biggest regret was I was trying to go over there to get more of that vegan cake, and people would stop. You know, I was like, ah, so delicious. And then you had Tracy Real's Tracy's Real Food. She makes these great uh um, vegan cheeses. So those are two of the companies that we'd be able to profile. And so when they do their thing, uh, then they, they get that publicity and it, it's sort of a win-win for everything, everybody. So one of the things that we don't want to do is do win-lose contests in the sense that I feel that veganism is about evolution and the whole basis of eating animals is for me to live, you have to die. For me to win, you have to lose. And I feel that veganism is really an evolution in uh, how we relate to the world. I, you can win, I can win, right? When they interviewed Pat Brown, who's who was uh, and the big man behind uh, Impossible Burgers, the vegan burgers... I, I'll never forget this. I was watching one of these um, cable financial shows and the woman said, well, your top contributor beyond me. And he said, no, I'll stop you right there. They're not our, they're not our competitors. They're not our competitors. Mm-hmm. Um, let me start that again, because it was a very important moment. I apologize. But I was watching cable and Pat Brown, the head of Impossible Foods was being interviewed. That's the vegan burger. And the woman said, your top competitor beyond me. And he said, I want to stop you right there. They're not our competitors. We have the same goals. We wish them the very best. We are both mission driven to end animal agriculture. And when he said that, I was like, bingo, that's evolution. You can see it. Right. And she was kind of like, I don't understand because people are so in, it's so ingrained in our culture that it's kill or be killed, rat race, all these phrases and really, veganism is is all about putting on a whole new set of glasses to approach the world. No, nobody has to die for me to have a good life. Not even the spiders that I just 
were, I was seeing spiders. I was sweeping up some uh, sand in my deck and I saw a few spiders and I was like, I don't want to hurt them. I want them to get away from right. my broom. Right. Right. And I think that's the greatest thing about the vegan sphere is the inclusivity and the acceptance. Uh, I also saw you at the Vegan Women Summit a few weeks ago held in Los Angeles. And it was the the vibration, the energy of that place was you could literally leave your purse, your camera, all your belongings in a chair, come back eight hours later and no one would touch it. Um, the thought process of there was so many food um, distributors and, and product distributors, but it wasn't a sense of competition. Everybody was there truly to elevate one another. You want to hear this? So I'm sitting there videotaping and somebody accused me of very dramatically walking down the aisle. And it was funny. I mean, he, he wasn't accusing me. He was saying, you're very dramatic walking down the aisle. I said, because I don't have a stabilizer. I was walking very carefully and dramatic <laughs> down the aisle to get video of all the people. So anyway, I'm shooting video. There were so many incredible speakers. I mean, you had Alicia Silverstone and Maggie Baird and all sorts of amazing people, all these women who had been on Shark Tank with their vegan products. It was mind blowing. So I was like, I'm going crazy. I mean, this is like a documentary and a half. How am I going to explain this to any editor? And then the woman next to me said, oh, I'm an editor and I'm a video editor and I'm here. And I said, I swear to God, I said, let me, let me see your reel. Me. She texted me her reel. I looked at it for like 45 seconds. I said, here's the chip. And I, I was the end of the day. Amazing. I said, here's the chip. Just take it and edit it. She did a great job. It's on Unchained TV. And you could see Shut it. Shut the and front door. Name's J Jigna. And she said, I'm going back to Texas tonight. I said, great, work on it. And, you know, we, we emailed back and forth and we did a couple of passes, but she did a great job. And that is, I that was that. the spirit of the whole thing. Yeah. And that's just the spirit of veganism. And so we are so grateful that you've created Unchained TV to allow veganism to enter into everybody's homes, their experiences, their personal lives. And we are just so grateful for you, Jane. Thank you. Well, I'm grateful for you. I love VKind. It's, it's fabulous. And I want to say one last thing. We have to keep our eyes, ears, and hearts open to everybody I find the, the people you don't necessarily expect to be interested in veganism are, and some of the highbrow, uh, best and the brightest that you'd think would go for veganism in a minute, are very shut down. So um, the other day, there was a street sweeping street crew from the city here, and I went out to talk to them about a little something. And uh, they said, well, what do you, what, somehow it ended up, of course, I brought in Unchained TV, right? And they said, oh, one of them said, my, my two kids are vegan. And then the other one says, my wife's trying to go vegan. I ran in the house, I grabbed some books, some vegan cookbooks, and I ran out and gave it to them. They were so overjoyed. It was such a wonderful moment. So That's veganism cool. is not, it's just like, um, well, I'm also in recovery. I'm 27 years sober, knock on wood, one day at a time. Um, you know, it, it, it knows. Let me, let me quote Dr. Rao. He said, when the earth is dying, a new breed of people from every race, creed, color, background, socioeconomic group, geographic group will rise up. And we are the food healers and we will rise up and we have a new consciousness and we will spread the word. And that's how I look at it. It's like you never know who gets gets it and it's just so keep keep your keep your mind open. This is why I think Unchained TV which is going simply to people looking for free content. It's 100% free. That's the number one search term for those device users. So they're just looking for free content. And maybe they stumble on something that opens their heart and they go vegan. 
And now that is how you close this show. And that wraps up this edition of Be Kind Connects with the amazing Jane Velez Mitchell. Now remember to learn more about what you can do to bring about large scale global change or just making an impact in your local community. Download the Unchained TV app and get involved today. And to watch this Be Kind Connects episode and many more, subscribe to our Be Kind Vibes YouTube channel. Give us a follow on Instagram at Be Kind app and download the Be Kind app right now. Thank you. Peeled, the world's first and only 100% vegan cooking competition show. Four of the world's top vegan chefs endure three rounds of brutal challenges as their culinary limits are tested. Three, two, one. Our panel of celebrity vegan judges don't hold back. The bar is going to be extremely high for me. Who will snatch the coveted title of hottest vegan chef? Find out this fall on Peeled.